Hey, what is going on, all you beauts and beauties? Welcome to episode 167 of Hat Trick Hockey Podcast, which is brought to you always by GL Heritage, the official beer of Hat Trick Hockey. If you like the merch, like what I'm wearing right now, you can smash the link in the description and hit to our merch store and uh, get all the HTH gear that you so desire. We've got a bunch of different stuff and keep your eyes on the horizon. We've got new stuff on the way yes, all the sir. time. We've got Brett and Ant zooming it up right now. We are going to mm -hmm. break down the Edmonton Oilers. Last two games have been absolutely on fire. Now they've actually got a shot, Ant, of coming all the way back and forcing a game seven here. Game five, five, three, Connor McDavid, yeah. Two games in a row, four points with his season on the line. And uh, absolutely incredible, man. I can't believe it. Uh, what are your thoughts? That's actually back-to-back -back four point games, I believe, That's for right. Connor McDavid. Look at you two, high-stepping out of the gate there with the intro. Great intro. Holy shit, Brad. These past couple games now, well, how many games has it been since we've recorded? It's been two games. So we recorded after game one. And then we did the the live stream uh, for okay, yeah. game four. Yeah. And so we were catching people up with that. So this is our first time since game one, breaking down the Stanley Cup final on tape with you guys here. And what a crazy sequence of events it has been. Like I didn't, I would not imagine that a week ago after we saw Edmonton go down 3-0, and get outplayed pretty well big time for those first three games to being arguably with they, they have the upper hand somehow like they're down three two but somehow they have all the momentum in the world and it's been a crazy two games and it all has to start in net first of all yeah, with Stuart yeah. Skinner well, like, but where did that come from I know, right? And when his back's against the wall, he's been fantastic. We'll go over the numbers about him at a later date. But I think you have to give so much credit for the last two games. Connor McDavid, four oh. points per game. That's the first time ever that someone's had back-to-back four-point games in the Stanley Cup final. He's now got over 40 points in the playoffs. That's the, that's the third most of all time. Only Mario Lemieux with 41 and Wayne Gretzky with 44 have more points That's than cool. Connor McDavid does in a postseason run as of right now. And he still has two more games to go. Here's so this, this, this could become an all time story here. And if McDavid and the Oilers can go back home and uh, win game six here and force a game seven back in Florida. Here's the thing, Matthew Kachuk, you woke up Connor McDavid. You should, <laughs> you should have just let him sleep. He was, he was, it's pretty bad when we say when he gets a point a game or two a game or whatever, that that's a quiet game for him, yep. which is insane when you come to actually think about it. Yep. But it's when you guarantee a win, first of all, you're not Mark Messier, number one. <laughs> you're a great player. You're a great player. You can flip games like that. I agree. You're an unreal player. You're not Mark Messier. Okay. Yeah. Why the hell? So then a quote like that now goes into the opposing locker room. So where, explain to the people what, what he said. So he pretty much said like, oh, well, we lost game four. It doesn't matter. We're going to go home game five and wrap this up. So that's pretty yeah, much. Yeah, he said, we're going to go do that tonight. Yeah, like yeah, say, we're, we're going to go win. We're going to go oh, do that. We're going to go win much. game four. Yeah. Yes. He didn't come right out and guarantee a win, but come on. The whole world knew what you were saying. Yeah. And in that opposing locker room is sitting Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, who are now just two wins away from capturing a Stanley Cup. Yeah, the reverse sweep, which would be incredible. And tell me, did we ever think that when the series was three to nothing, did we ever think that Edmonton would just all of a sudden flick? It's like they absorbed the beating for the first couple games of a series and just to yeah. see what the teams do, and then they adjust. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's just bam, goal, bam, goal. And they're getting it from everybody. Hyman's scoring. Dreisaitl's putting up points. Skinner's been unreal. Nurse hasn't looked bad at all either on defense. Yep. 
everything is clicking at the right time right now and there's no pressure on them. So why like they can just go out and play. All yeah. The pressure is on Florida. Yeah, like um we you and me talked uh, we did the live stream on Friday or whatever it was after the uh fourth game when they won 8 to 1, yeah, which we, was a big eye opener. And it was it was good to see. I didn't think that I I personally thought that it would be a much closer game the game four, but uh uh Edmonton got to Bobrovsky early and often, and, and it was enough to chase him. So they got him out of the game, and then they poured it on a little bit more in the third period there to make it 8-1. Fucking beat down. Yeah, and uh, I didn't think – we said, okay, like at least they know they can win one. But like what, I, what I'm meaning to get back to is me and you watched the post game, and McDay, you, McDavid was like, we literally have no pressure on us whatsoever. People have already written us off. We're down three zero. No one's ever done this before. So he's like, it literally, he, he was almost like saying he like, Oh, it means nothing, but like, it's one, it's one. But like now after game five, a nice five, three win, a well-earned win, you know, they get, they, they get out to a three Oh lead and they, uh, they get it back. It's a one goal game in the third period for quite a long time. Like the last 15 minutes or so were, was a one goal game and it could have gone either way in the, in the last two minutes, like Florida had some really good chances at the end there, but uh, yeah, think- but like they, the, the Oilers are playing like they have no care in the world because they, they, they don't, people have already written them off. They their backs against the wall. And this kind of reminds me of how they played in games six and seven against Dallas. Yeah. Right. They just complete. It, it just, it, I don't know. Like, I don't know the proper terms to use it, but they just seemed like they went into God mode. It was and just like, shut dude, down mode. Yeah. Like, and, they, would and score, they would get up and then they would just shut you down. Yeah. One, two, and it's two. impressive because we've been waiting for this all year. Right. Yeah. That's why I said it's weird. They're kind of like Homer Simpson when he was a boxer. Remember how he just lets, <laughs> lets everybody beat him up and then boom, boom, boom. And he's like a fucking rag all over. at the end. He just pushes you over because you're so tired. Essentially yeah. it's kind of what the, Edmonton Oilers are doing in a sense, but yeah, mind you, they're getting good goaltending at the right timing. They're just the scoring. Everything is at the right time right now. It's timely. Here's yeah. the thing. scoring. The first goal in this series is huge. I think the stats are over 80% or 85% when the first, when the, whoever scores the first goal in the Stanley cup finals usually wins that game. Well, even in general, like in, in a hockey game, the first goal is super, super important. Like the statistics on if you score first, a lot of the time you will win the hockey game. But um, to add to your point, like the to to get out to that 1-0 lead was super important. And in games four and five, do you remember who got the opening goal for Edmonton in those two games? A guy named Connor Brown. Yeah. Who's been he's been killing it on the penalty kill. And so in game four, he opened the scoring on a nice play for Yanmark to finish off. Like he completely deked out the goalie, left it on a plate for him in the crease to tap it in. And then on the second and in game five, he opened it up again, shorthanded, I was scored just again. Say, I believe that was that was a shorty. Yeah. And just absolutely unreal the effort that they're getting from their their special teams unit, their spe- their penalty killers. And uh it reminds me of even like as soon as Edmonton is up a man or is down a man, it seems like they're just so much more dangerous somehow. Like yeah. even when they played four on four, like it was right after a face off. I believe it was Yanmark just wal- waltzed right up to up the right wing there and then and deked and then fed it over to Nugent Hopkins. I thought that was going to make it four one right then. And that was an absolutely incredible save by Bobrovsky. That would have even would have even uh, made, made the the deficit even further for them if not for that save it would have been kind of like the backbreaker at that point because they had just gotten their first goal yeah. in that game so but uh what an absolute finish too how do you want to do you want to break down the whole game do you want to just talk about the ebbs and flows like because like mcdavid when he scored that third period goal sharp angle on bobrovsky i don't know what bobrovsky was 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 doing he was probably expecting him to go around the net but he shot it and he hit it off his left skate and in like that was absolutely massive. And that crowd in Edmonton really seemed like yeah. they responded really well after that, even though Florida scored 19 seconds later. Yeah. I think play of the game though, Matthew Kachuk play of, of game five, when he slid back on the empty net. 
even yes. Though, even though they scored right after. What an effort, though! Like I got incredible effort. Yeah, like, I'm glad that I'm glad that you said that. That puck was inches from the goal line. It just so happened it popped out right to Connor McDavid. <laughs> like, yeah, that's and, that's just the luck of the draw. But I'm saying, what an incredible defensive play to and, one, uh, hustle back that like he would he had to gain ground on that puck. It was going right for the center of the net. You ever notice that? Whenever it takes like a hop off the boards or whatever, you ever notice that the puck always hits right in the center of the net? Like, you, you ever notice that? Oh, I never noticed that. Okay, watch. But, uh... when, when teams score own goals or just like stupid goals from a long ways away, watch. It's always near the middle of the net. I don't know why. It's super weird. I never noticed that, but I was really impressed with the fact that I thought that Kachuk was going to throw his stick. And if he throws the stick, that's an automatic goal. So like the fact that he was able to just lay out completely and swipe at that puck at the last minute, because there is still 20 seconds left. Like if that, if that puck swipes off the boards and it's to his own teammate, and now they've got one or two guys deep for Edmonton, because they're trying to get that last goal because they missed an, an, an earlier empty net shot too that went off the side of the post, right? Mm-hmm. And so, like, just think about this huge swing that that could have made if that puck just doesn't go right to Connor, right on Connor McDavid's stick and he yeah. fires it right into the middle of the net. Yeah, that's but, the only thing, like, shitty, shitty bounce that it went right to McDavid, but incredible play. And even the play that he made to get them their first goal off the turnover there like he's got like that's a tight turnaround that you have to make he's got the puck and like within one or two strides he's releasing it and scoring top chat Mm -hmm. like that's that's impressive so he's been been super good he shoots at odd times like he shoots when you don't think he's going to shoot the puck like when you're in between stride, like you're thinking yeah. he's going to take one more half second with the yeah. puck, but he's, he's already released it. Yeah. yeah so he's very, I mean. and you know what? You can't teach that shit. Like, no, that, that's great instincts. Yes. That's stuff that you can't, when you can shoot in the middle of a stride. Yeah. Be like bar down beating one of the best goalies in the world. Like right after getting the puck. Yeah. After like, stealing oh. from one of the best guys in the league two on defense. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yes. Like, so yeah. Fuck. I'm telling you, I love it. Like, do you really think though that they're gonna come home and lose Game Six? Like, do you? There's not a chance. No fucking way. There's no way that I Edmonton think loses we're Game I, Six. Honestly, I think we're going seven, man. That's what, and 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 the funny part is, is that when we even like previewed the the Stanley Cup Finals, I always said, I said, I said, uh, Florida and seven, right? I always, I was like, I want Edmonton. I would love to see Edmonton yeah. win, but I don't think it's gonna be quite there. I didn't think. I thought it would be like Florida winning in six, like after like maybe Edmonton won game two or game three kind of thing. But I didn't, I would have never thought that the reverse sweep was even possible. I got the, two questions for you. Yeah. One, what's scarier than playing Connor McDavid in the Stanley Cup finals? Okay. Two. Playing Connor McDavid and Evan Bouchard no, at the no, I'm just saying, no, playing him in, in the Stanley Cup Finals, his first yeah. Stanley Cup Final appearance, and then two. Well, what's scarier than playing Connor McDavid in the Stanley Cup Finals when he knows he's only two wins away? Yeah, that's that's, and he seems like he's got it in his eye right now, man. You can fucking it's, see it on his face that he ain't playing. It's we just, uh. Woo. And you and I noticed that when we were watching the, all the post game stuff on the Friday or, uh, after Game Four, sorry, and it was just like, are you like he just? It looked like he was just absolutely super focused, like no Scores emotion on the bench. He just mm-hmm. and just like the mm-hmm. eyes, it was just it was it was very surreal. And you noticed it at the same time that I did. Like we're like, look at his eyes, man. Yeah. Like he yeah. is like he's so super focused, and like he has never looked better. He has never looked better, which is insane. He's too to away from doing something that he's wanted to do his entire life. Oh, absolutely. Like you can tell that they, they have absolutely uh, clenched their sticks a little bit and they, they've been playing much better. And that's a, and that's a test. That's a testament to Chris Nabla, the head coach too. Yes. Being able to get his guys back. Adjust the and, whole structure. Yeah. And like the fact that you're able to be able to pull this off against a Paul Maurice team is even more impressive because Paul has been doing this 
at a very, very high level for so long. And like I, I didn't realize until I was doing some research on Paul a little while ago that he was the second youngest head coach ever in the NHL. He was 28 and he was leading an NHL team. Did you back know in the day. did you know among all the four sports or of all the coaches or whatever, he's the one that's been in his respective league the longest without a championship? That's even crazier. So he, it's, it's like 25 or 26 years. He's been almost, he's, he's been a head coach since I think 96 or something like that. He's almost at 30 years as a head coach. And he's never won a Stanley Cup, man. Has he? No, he's never been this close before. I, I think, think he's been, been, he had been to the finals before, but never. Well, he got I'm to the finals sure with the last staff, year. It was like mid 20, between 20 and 30 years. Yeah. Like he's been at least a head coach, I believe, since ninety eight. Because they were talking about he he took over for Hartford, the Hartford uh, Whalers back in the day. I guess if you know, like we kind of flip over to the Florida side a little bit, you know, if like he gets one, I guess is okay. And Kachuk, like as much as he's a pain in the ass, it'd be okay to see him win one. Barkov, for sure. Like they they are absolutely worthy of being in the final and when- and. Winning it 100%, especially like last year. Like they had a great run last year, but they ran into a Vegas team that was just ready to win. Well, they were like, they were banged up too. Yeah, exactly. In the final, like they weren't ready to win that series. Of Unfortunately, that just happens, right? Hmm. So I would be okay. Well, it depends on how, what kind of game. Like that game five was an awesome game. Like when it was 4-3 after Ekman Larson sniped to make it 4-3, like that was super exciting stuff. And like the chances that were going on later in the game were absolutely incredible. And and like the fact that the empty net goal didn't come until 20 yeah. seconds left is like kind of like hockey being like, okay, now this game is over. Kind yeah. of thing. Like I just like, don't now. want it to be a freaking blowout though. Like I hope no, and I and I don't think tight. we'll see that. Not now, because I think you're gonna see both teams tighten up. Oh you're gonna see whoever gets a lead, they're just gonna protect the lead. Yeah, it's almost going to be like soccer. First, yeah, yeah, it's going to be like a, it's going to be a like I think game six is going to be a like two to one or three yeah. to two game. I don't think we're going to see a blowout like we did in game four, and I don't think they're going to be as loosey goosey as they kind of were in game five. They each team was yeah kind of letting it fly a little bit. They opened everything kind of right up to where it just mm-hmm. it was more offensive than there was anything defensive. I think in this game six, you're going to see it really do that 180. And I think you're going to see a more defensive style of play for for both of these teams. And it's going to be really low scoring and it's going to come down game six. I'm going to call it now is coming down to goaltending. Whatever goalie is going to be better is where one's either going to hoist the cup or the other is going to force a game seven. And I think that's what it's going to come down to because everybody's going to cancel each other out. All the stars are going to cancel each other out. And it's going to come down to those goaltending. I think shots will be low too. You're going to see a lot of guys block a lot of shots. Yeah. Getting those lanes are going to crowd up those lanes. This is going to be a very, very defensive, hard hitting game, I think. Yeah. I think if I was like put like a number on like a better, say like an over under, I would say like the you, I'd probably go under four goals, under four goals, because it'll probably be like a, like under four and a half, because I would think it's going to be like a three one game maybe. Yeah. Or if I was to say like the first person to three goals is going to win, like it might be two to one with, and then three, one in an empty net. Like I think, or it's going to be, or it's going to be two, two and we're going to go to overtime. I honestly think that we can see overtime. in I'm I'm kind of shocked. We haven't had an overtime game in this series yet, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like we, me, you and Tristan, we're all talking about the fact that we like, we had all said at one point that this game, that like game five, well, we, it felt like it was going to go to overtime. Yeah. And like when, and when uh, I think it was like the last two minutes, Florida had a really great a chance and they did it and it didn't go in. And it was like, Oh, like that was, that was kind of like their last gas, but they really sustained a lot of pressure in that last 90 seconds though. Like they, they had some good opportunities to, to make something happen, but. For sure. And let me tell you guys, so Tristan's going to be on the back half of the episode here with me and his opinions when he was letting them fly in the chat, it might Ooh. shock you. It might shock you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I was surprised. Yeah, sure. We're going to have him coming up in a bit. So I'm just kind of letting everybody know in case you're wondering where the hell is Tristan. So yeah, Tristan we're just had splitting to, it up a little had to bit. work and stuff. So Brett and I are yeah. kind of just recording, but uh, cause this is, yeah. this is an absolutely an important 
game to break down and like point of the series to break this all down Mm -hmm. because like literally a legend could be in the making right now if Edmonton's able to come back and pull this off Mm -hmm. but if Florida cuts them out like you know cuts them off at in game six or game seven I feel like that would be like uh like almost like a a cap like a, a feather in the cap of like the past two years for them like as as a team right to be able to to say okay like we were up three zero we oh look at the skill right there for Ann, for all of you guys watching on YouTube and is successfully transferring a lime from the bottom <laughs> of a corona to the top. Oh, Thank wow. you, my friend. That is skill. He is a man of many talents. Podcaster, father, beer connoisseur. Whatever, you know. <laughs> um <laughs> so <laughs> I forgot what I was saying that. <laughs> but uh the fact like I think that if Florida is able to come back and either win game six or game seven, it would kind of be like, okay, like the final like challenge was, was uh, like uh, quelched basically like stopped. I think, like, I think what shocked me more is none of these games have won in the overtime. I think that's, that's why I, I've, that's why I have a feeling that game six could definitely be an overtime. I'm thinking maybe two, 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 two with the game winner. So I guess it would, if I was, you know, I guess maybe I'll change game, my idea. What if we get a game seven OT? If we get a game seven OT, just hockey boners just going to be fully raging. Just and, game seven overtime <laughs> Stanley Cup final. Come on. And and uh, I'm almost disappointed that game seven is a Monday night instead of the Sunday night for some reason. But I don't know. Like, yeah. I think it's because they wanted over. two games off in between two mm-hmm. days in, in between two days off in between games. But they had a week before the series, for God's sakes. Like, you yeah, know, I don't know. Like, Maybe they think on, that they can get a bigger. Are, both teams are fairly healthy going in. Yeah, for sure. I think that maybe they're just thinking that they could get a bigger audience on a Monday night rather than a Sunday night. I don't know why, but that's crazy talk. It's probably just because it, it's it's probably because of the travel length is so high between both cities. Like it's oh, yeah, what, right. isn't it over like three thousand miles or something? I like think that? it's a long flight. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see the clip of me David talking to the reporters after the game, saying, "Are you guys excited for your flight? Ready to go back to Florida?" You oh yeah, I love it. Hey, you know what? That's the thing, though, man. You should. They should. But it's gonna come down to like they shouldn't have said anything. Chucky should have just kept his mouth shut, played his game. Mm-hmm. Although he had a big game five too. He had three points as well. He, so. he played well. Kachuk yeah. played well. He backed it up. And dude, yeah. what we forgot to say that missed um, too many men. It could have been like that was pretty borderline. Like obviously, like when you when you freeze it, mm-hmm. there's six guys on the ice that yeah. when Edmonton plays the puck there. But uh, like did, he he was yeah he was he was pleading his case so bad. Did you but, see uh, game four the um Chicklets guys at the game there Biz just crippled in a fucking crop top like Oilers shirt <laughs> just buckled. No. Oh, I'll That's have to funny. send you some clips. Yeah, it was funny, but those guys they were on the big screen. Their place went nuts mm-hmm. because Wit played for the Oilers, right? Yes. And what was funny was like. A long time ago, he's like, I'll never wear another man's jersey and this and that. And he was at the game wearing a Nugent Hopkins jersey. They were – fans were torching him. So it was fun. Good. That's it was funny. Fun. But it was oh, good. That made me think. So even if Florida wins game six or game seven, do you think McDavid deserves the con Smythe? We'll get this on tape right now. Yes. Okay. Based on his, just the past two games? Absolutely. And – I, if it goes to anybody on Florida, it better be Barkov. Yeah, if um, if Bobrov, if if Florida had swept and Bobrovsky had like played really well in game yeah, four, like a nine forty five save percentage and shit, like like something crazy. Yeah, I would if they had swept or won even in game five. I would say you could give him like Bobrovsky could get a, a con Smythe. But now after the past two games, I I think that's off the table now. It's either gonna be either Kachuk or Barkov for Florida, or See, it's got to be Kachuk to me at the start of the series was kind of out of the con smite talks because he was quiet the first couple games, and then all of a sudden now he's really come alive. So now it's kind of putting him right back into the con smite chat. So yeah, I don't know who I don't know what the I should have looked this up, but like I should have like the what the points break down across the whole series is because mm-hmm. McDavid has a bunch of points, obviously, mm-hmm. but like volume of work like you could say even like give an outside shot to like Bouchard 
for having 30 points in the postseason, but like he's only had a couple points in the final. So it's like, is it's, and it's always like the final MVP. It's not about yeah the whole playoff system. Right. So I think just on the 10 points that McDavid has right now in the series, like, for I think that would be enough for Con Smythe. I don't know, unless someone has like a cre- like, Unless there's someone I'm not thinking of that has a bunch of someone points for Florida, Florida throw, throw, throws up a fucking hat trick in Game Six and wins it. it like. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, it could be something interesting like that. But so I just wanted to get your take on if McDavid deserves Con Smythe or I think not. So. Yeah, I think and so. like for me, it's like it's kind of like it's just like a crapshoot for anybody on Florida. When's like last... you could give you could give the Con Smythe to Paul Maurice for all I care. When's but... the last time a losing player got one? J.S. Jaguar, when he took Anaheim to the final and they lost to uh, New Jersey, I believe that was 2003. Yeah. So, yeah, I believe that was uh, the year after the Wings won in 2002. And so, that was, and they, and Anaheim beat them in the first series oh, there. J.S. Jaguar. And I'll always remember, like, uh, for some reason, when I was thinking about Jaguar, I'll always remember the clip after the game because New York, I mean, New Jersey won and everything. And like, that was Marty Brodeur and like Scott Stevens, Scott Niedermeyer, like really, really good team. But like everyone was focused on JS Jaguar because he was like just off to the side, like just waiting to get like the Consmite trophy. And he was just, he just hung his head the entire time because he knew he was so close. But they were so close. One, like the following year with Anaheim when like they had I, stronger I, and all them and, I think you're right, but like I just remember like getting the con Smythe, but losing and him just being like, This is probably the like you know, like imagine being in that position. Like this is the this is like probably the greatest moment of my hockey career right now. Yeah. And I'm just absolutely devastated that it's yeah, even it's happening. In the fucking locker room. You think I want to be out here right now? Yeah. But yeah, I always just thought about that. So it could be a situation where McDavid still gets the con Smythe, even if they lose game six. I don't, I don't, I'm not predicting them to lose game six. I think this will go game seven. We're we're, we're going seven. We're going the long haul. Hopefully. Yeah. And that'll be interesting because it'll be another late game on a Monday night kind of thing. Like, so, but it would be six o'clock. It would be six o'clock back in Edmonton where like when, when it's going on there, I don't know, but we'll see, man. Absolutely. Is there uh, any talk? other predictions? I I don't think so. Is there anybody? Um, do you want to go game winning goal here? Um, I was happy. No matter if it's seven one, the second goal. Like it, it, I think it was. I honestly, I think it's going to be like Corey Perry. Like that gets like the clincher because he had that awesome. He had the had the McDavid feed to go up four one. Um, it was four one or four two, whatever. But that that make that sick McDavid power play assist when he deked everyone out of their shoes and just left it on a plate for Perry. I think it could be a situation like that, or like a guy like uh, Warren Fogle or someone I, like. I was literally just thinking him. I was thinking <laughs> um, New or even the, too. Yeah, or like positive. a guy like Connor Brown. He would yeah. deserve it. It's gonna be a. It's gonna be a. Not. It's not gonna be a known guy. No, I sport. I agree. Like, it's going to be somebody that you would never think of, like the Peter, like, Plima, and in a game in fucking yeah. 5 o'clock like, in the morning. Like, that one game. And, yeah. What's, it's going to um, be something like where he got out on the ice on accident. Like, it's something yeah. crazy like that. Yeah. I, I completely agree. I think if it does happen, yeah, if it, it – I don't know if I if I I don't know if I can. It's not say, going to be a known goal scorer because they're going to be covered. Yeah, I'm not. I'm just having a hard time like deciding whether or not Edmonton's going to come all the way back and win Game Seven. That's the only thing that I'm worried about. I think that they can force Game Seven, but I, but I keep well, wanting to go to back to. Another... I keep wanting to go back to my original pick of Florida mm-hmm. and Seven, mm-hmm. right? But I don't know, like that, like and like the past two games are making me sweat about the decision because I don't know if I want to go back on my original word or not, but they're playing so well. And McDavid's at like such a high level right now that it's like, it's absolutely must watch. Yeah, And it's, it's a, it's the greatest playoff run that we've seen since Mario or Wayne. So yeah. I'm, I'm 100% down to, to throw the chips down and both of those guys won. So it's my literally a, a flip I of the said, coin in game seven. I said Florida was going to win the cup like two rounds ago. 
three rounds ago. <laughs> so I kind of have to fucking, that's why I said, I'm like, my brain's telling me Florida, but my heart's telling me Edmonton. So that's what, that's but, how I feel as well. Like <laughs> the, the momentum in me and like the storyteller in me wants Edmonton to come all the way back oh, and yeah. like, just rewrite the wrong and, and are not you rewrite on your the wrong phone but, like, right now or are you on a computer? I'm on a computer. Look up the last time on your phone, the last time a team came back from a 3-0 deficit and won the Stanley Cup. I think it was. Oh, I know exactly what it is. It was it? it was the Toronto Maple Leafs in 1942. Didn't they beat the Red Wings? I believe that was correct, yes. There you go, Toronto fans. There you go. You're there one, you go. That's all you get. You won, like, championship. Yes. Uh, last time uh, my, Toronto was top of the <laughs> For all of you Woo! listening on audio, uh, Ant is uh, raising his Yeti cup as a <laughs> as a cup. It, it was probably about that size. It, about that back then, yeah, it was definitely it was like more like cylindrical. There was, was no just big a fat bowl. base. All bottom. their names are carved on the end. See, see the names that are carved on the inside of it. That was the last time the Leafs won. They carved on the inside of it there. Yeah, I'm excited to see what uh, what Tristan has to say about the finals and what he thinks is going to happen in Game Six, Game Seven. You, I think he's going to be letting some takes fly. Do you have anything else you want to talk about, or should we just go over to Tristan? Let's. I think I think we've said our piece. We're we're uh, we're heartbroken about uh, the decision whether or not Edmonton and or Florida is going to win Game Seven, but we both agree that it's going to go to Game Seven. So. I think Tristan might have some opinions yeah. about Tristan's what's gonna takes happen. are wild. If he lets what's fly what he did in the chat, you guys are gonna let let's let's just let's just go to Tristan. So all right, with it without further ado, let's uh, send it to our man Tristan McGuire. Thanks for watching Hat Trick Hockey. Make sure you guys download wherever you get your uh, wherever wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to watch us on YouTube, and uh, we'll see you next time here on Hat Trick Hockey. Good night. Well, we tracked him down, Tristan. We got him. We got him. We, we tracked him down. We tracked him down. We sent out a search party. We got him. Um, Tristan, Stanley Cup Finals in full swing, buddy. Yep. What do you think here? Like, what What do you think is going to happen? What do you think? What Who do you got in the series? Just let it rip, buddy. I think if Connor McDavid fell off the face of the earth, <laughs> the the – Edmonton Oilers would have never sniffed a playoff spot this year, let alone be in the cup final. He's approaching, what is he? He's like seven, maybe it's nine. No, I think it, no, it is nine points away from Wayne Gretzky's all-time record, which still is ridiculous. Had four points the other night. Back-to-back games. Yeah, two goals, including the empty netter, which don't even ask me what Oliver Ekman Larson was doing there. Just watched him get the puck and was like, oh, like <laughs> – Great save by Matthew Kachuk. Yeah. Save of his career and then whoosh, right in the net. Love Bill Zito's reaction. Did you see that? Yeah, I throw in his water bottle. He the whole time they were showing him in that final minute, he was fuming. Yeah. Like I think I think if one of the players from the bench were next to him, he would have put them to sleep. It was we'll see. I, I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> It really feels like the Florida Panthers are going to blow this. I could be wrong, and they could just walk right out there next game and spank them, no problem. The main driver is they are getting scored on first. And the reason that is, is Sergey Bobrovsky, what happened? Yeah. What happened? Like, mm. what, did he look at a black cat in between games three and four? Like, Yeah. It, What's, what, it's what do you a allow? Really different player. It's what like you, it's like the spirit. You ever watch Space Jam? Yeah. So you know when they have the basketball and they steal all the basketball players' talent. Yeah. It's like that happened to Sergey Bobrovsky. He forgot <laughs> how to hockey. He's out there like leaving the the Darnell Nurse goal. I think it was two games ago. Mm-hmm. Gave him the whole blocker side. Yeah, he I've seen that. Goal. He was like he's in his butterfly, literally way off center like a foot and a half off center. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. I I, I can't begin. And the defense, oh my gosh, Gus, Gustav Forsling. He's been lackluster. Aaron Ekblad's actually been one of their better D during this. Montour week. hasn't really been that good either. Montour. You know who's actually been good for them on D? Nico Mikola. Yeah. We mentioned him a few episodes back, but that was just, I, I don't know. I hope Panthers 
put Edmonton to sleep because that would be ridiculous. I'm actively cheering for the Panthers now. Like the other <laughs> night, it, it was like it was disappointing. Hang on. Oh, give me give me one second. Oh boy. Want, yes. You want to see bandwagon Tristan? Oh, <laughs> you're a bandwagon Tristan. Yep. Ban- bandwagon Tristan is making an appearance here. <laughs> you ready for this. Oh, this is good TV. Yes, it is. <laughs> trying to sort through some stuff here. Oh, come on. There As you know, go. being on the pod, shit piles up. Oh, come on. <laughs> You fucking! Oh, you would! Oh my gosh, that's so. You like that, eh? That's hilarious, (laughs) man. Just bandwagon. They better win. They better win. You can't choke a three nothing series lead in the Cup Finals. Last team did it was Toronto, so that tells you how long ago it was. No, last yeah, Toronto did it. I think it was was against forty five. They were playing the wings. Forty two. Yeah, I think it was 45. I thought the war was still going on. I thought I I seen 45. I don't know. I know it's 40. The Red Wings. No, 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 no. I saw something, a team that came back from a 3-0 deficit. Detroit has done it in 45, but they lost in game seven. Oh, okay. But no one, the only team that has ever done it in the cup final, I think, is that Toronto team Mm -hmm. that beat the Red Wings in 42, which is unbelievable. Which I don't even know who would have been playing then. That's during World War Two. So if wow. you get drafted, like who's even playing? Like fifty year olds? Well, maybe yeah. Because all the eighteen what, what, to twenty five year old guys probably got like conscripted. Yeah, it's crazy, man. And Canada was a lot smaller of a nation back then. There was only so many guys to pull from. So, but... in the end, man. What do you got on the series? What do you got? What do you What do you take it? Are you sticking with Florida? Or are you coming over to the dark side? I'm sticking not. Che- Why would I ever cheer for the Edmonton Oilers? The reason they are winning is for all the wrong reasons. Mm-hmm. They are carried by one player. One player. I can't Jesus. think of a team that like. What? What? <laughs> hey, um, the, the worst part too is I had to say. Florida because I picked them like what two three rounds ago I think to win yeah, you Florida in seven so I, that's why I said my up here I'm saying Florida my brain is saying Florida but my heart is saying Edmonton just because I kind of want to see I do want to see Connor win one I just want to see if Darnell win Nurse wins the Stanley Cup yeah but we're not talking about Nurse so we're talking about McDavid Darnell Nurse plays on that team I their know. defense is garbage <laughs> I. I I can't even be it's Stuart Skinner is two different guys in every series. I saw a stat the other day. I'm sure you talked about it with Brett. He is like a 931 in elimination games and is like nine and zero or something like that. Yeah, he's nine and zero. I seen yeah, I know it was nine and zero. It's like a one like a one three goals against and it's like a nine something save percentage. High it's nine thirty one. Yeah. That's uh, Maybe it's like nine fifty four. Yeah, something it might be like ridiculous that. It, it was high. But I just seen it before we came on. Props there. to him, but like, can he have one of his crappy games again, please? Like, where's the Stuart Skinner we know and love? Do you that keeps up for? Do you at least want to see it go seven? No, because that means Edmonton has a chance. <laughs> you don't want. See, if this series the- goes seven, I don't think they're losing at home in Game Six, man. It'd be so funny if it's one of those things where, like, the team comes back only for Florida to win, like, 6 nothing. Oh, that would be so, so disappointing. Would be hilarious. You'd be sitting there with a big fucking grin on your shitty <laughs> grin on your face, wouldn't you? <laughs> It'd be so funny if, like, the first play, like, I don't wish anyone getting hurt, obviously. But, like, first play of the game, McDavid goes awkward to the boards and, like, breaks his wrist. In game seven, and you hear the announcer, and they're without McDavid for the rest of this game. And all you see is the Oilers on the bench are like rocking back and forth because they know they're cooked. Without him, they, they're nothing. They're nothing. They are nothing. Like, honestly, Leon Dreisaitl might be the most overrated player in the league. Yeah, that's Come right. Come on. Just, uh, Come on. He's slow, 
He has a good shot and good yeah. passing, but he's not dynamic. I'm going to get toasted. You're, you're going to get fucking torched. But, <laughs> I, I would okay. take I would take here's okay, so Zach Kyman actually. Never mind Dry Settle. I gotta give Dry Settle credit. He is a very good player. There's a reason he gets over hundred points every year, aside from McDavid. But Hyman, on the other hand, don't even get me started on Zach Hyman. Just backdoor tappins. Oh my gosh. He, I'd take any one of the Florida Panthers top six. Over Zach Hyman. Oh, yeah. Easily. It's I funny because he was drafted by Florida like seven years ago or whatever, eight years ago. Whatever. That is what it is. Yeah, bandwagon. I hope, the cats, you know why I hope the Cats win it? I'm going to Florida in two months, and guess what? It'd be cool if the city has a cool buzz from that because uh, Sunrise is not – it's probably like an hour from where I'm staying. So. Or Aaron Ackblad, maybe bringing it back to back to Bell River. That would be awesome. And you know what else, too? If they win, I'm going to make a post right away for the 73s page. We haven't posted in a long time mm -hmm. and say shout out to former 73s goaltender's brother. So Darian Ackblad, for those who don't know, he played on the 73s. He is Aaron Ackblad's. I want to say younger brother or older. They're very close within two years apart of each other. Darian was a goalie. Very good one for the 73s. Later on, who would know? His brother becomes the first overall pick. Playing yeah. for the Barry Colts, goes to the Panthers, and has been there ever since. That would be great. I don't know. I'd love to see Florida win it over Edmonton. I just think, I think it's so sad that a team that's built so well loses to one guy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and Bouchard, I know he's having some kind of a great run. He's one of those guys, I, I said this to Brett, he's one of those guys, we're going to look back 10 years from now and go, what happened to Evan Bouchard? Because he's one of those one-hit wonders. Yeah. He's a Tyler Myers. He's one of those, he plays on a stacked team, which stacked team is a relative term. They're one guy, as I said. And he just takes clappers from the point. And, or he passes it to McDavid and Dreisaitl. Hell yeah, I would too. Get those points, baby. <laughs> it's just like, it's frustrating watching a team like, you're like, yeah, Florida, they've got terrific defense, mm -hmm. 12 lines deep, three goalies that are starting caliber. Nope, you just lost to Stuart Skinner. Like, that would just, yeah, it's, it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I hate saying that name and Stanley Cup in the same sentence, but. Oh. Anywhere. All right. So you're on you're on Florida. Let's, right? let's get on with the so trade. Let's move on. Okay. So what's happening with this like Goudreau thing here? So first off, you want to yeah, you want to touch on the Barclay Goudreau. So Barclay Goudreau makes 3.6 million a year. It's an overpay. He's got three years left. Rangers regret signing him. He only has 12 points in the regular season this year. Wow. All of a sudden he pops off in the playoffs. Had that big winner. I'm not sure if you remember his I think it was like with like 30 seconds remaining in regulation or something like that, or it was yeah. a time goal, something like that for the Rangers, this playoffs, great playoff run by Goudreau put up the points. He was like third on his team at points. Panarin disappeared, did nothing. Guys like that have to step up. Rangers decide mm, not worth the salary cap, even though he had a good playoff. So they've got options, right? You can trade them. Well, limited, no trade clause, 10 teams. Wouldn't they know it? Who's on there? Well, the team he's currently on now, San Jose. <laughs> they went around Goodrow's no trade clause by putting him on waivers because the Sharks called them and said, Yeah, we'll take him if you waive him. Hmm. How that's slimy. That's dirty. That's dirty. Yeah, that is slimy. Mm -hmm. So now Barclay Goodrow goes back to the most mid team ever. It's so funny. They keep picking up third liners. That team's gonna be four lines of a third I feel line. like, has he played there before? Are you kidding me? You did not just ask that. I thought I thought I've seen him in a Yes. He scored the comeback OT goal against the Vegas Golden Knights. Okay. You remember that? Uh, yes. it now it's all three. okay. No, now it it's all coming full. Now the it's comeback, full remember? 
They were that up was, three nothing. That lost. was coming full circle. See, I I knew I thought I've seen him in that freaking jersey before. All right. Yep. Okay. Sorry, man. Go ahead. No, no, but like. I think it's a good move by San Jose. Mm-hmm. They're not worried about their salary cap. They got to hit the cap floor. Um, they're drafting Celebrini. Imagine they don't. That'd be so funny. Oh, the GM no. talks to you live on air like he's drafting him, and he's like, "That's some. That's I just watched a movie like that draft day. You ever seen it? It's Kevin Costner football starring, movie. Uh, starring Shane, right? Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Same thing. A guy like that, and he falls. Yeah. Because then you're gonna think, well, what's wrong with him, right? If if he fell past one, how far does he go? Probably yeah. only two. It's a no-brainer. Hockey's there's not that much drama in hockey. It's pretty certain, right? Yeah. You could uh, cross your T's and dot your I's, but we'll see. I I mean, Goodrow in San Jose, it's a good PR move. He he's a leader there. He'll probably wear a letter, although he's pretty incensed to go there. Do you um, think he'll? even play there or do you think they'll just move him because he, if he's very vocal about not wanting to play in san jose do you think they'll just move him no they want him to play no, that's unprofessional know. if you just say you don't want to play there well speaking of which you got another move <laughs> pierre luc dubois yes straight up no salary tension nothing I think he's making eight mil for like another seven years. Crazy. Or six years. Six. To, from LA to Washington. And Washington gives back Darcy Kemper, their starting goalie who ended up becoming like their backup slash third string because Charlie Lindgren came of the AHL and played really well for them. Mm-hmm. Bad signing, 4.5 million. Uh, three years left, I believe goes to LA who's had a carousel of goalies since quick left. I think mm-hmm. their active one is Cam Talbot. I don't know how much he has yeah. left on his deal or if he's a free agent, but interesting move. Um you get rid of a cancer in the locker room. Wasn't a good fit in Winnipeg. Or well one isn't a good fit in Winnipeg. Then he got traded for a haul. Now this is this is where it looks bad. You traded I believe it was a first Rasmus Kapari and Gabriel Velarde to Winnipeg for Pierre-Luc Dubois to only to sign him and trade him for Darcy Kemper. That means they gave up Pierre-Luc Dubois, Rasmus Kapari, Alex Iafalo, that's who else was in it. Mm-hmm. Alex Iafalo, Gabe Velarde, all for Darcy Kemper. A $4.5 million backup. Oof, that's oh. bad. That's Rob Blake. That is firing worthy. Ouch. But he's drafted well. He's got Quentin Byfield, Graham, or uh, not Graham Clark, Brant Clark. Uh, that one's an ouch for me. I. What do you think of the move? You well, do fuck. Do well in Washington? He's, I think he will. Well. Go they already got a couple one B winers over oh, there. Yeah. They got Anthony Manta. Yeah. Yeah. Well, going over there, you know, that's a long deal though. That's a big cap hit for a guy that's on the fucking the old decline. And also imagine going from Los Angeles to downtown DC. That'd be like such a change. Oh. oh. Yeah, I I wouldn't be. I'd be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> And what about what about Kemper? He's living the life. Four point five mil to play like garbage. Go live in L.A. I'll take that. You might as well pay me four point five mil. Kemper is. I don't know. Whatever happened to his career was on a bad team. Great goalie, right? He was with Arizona. Goes to a good team at the time, Washington. Career tanks. Now he's in his early thirties. We're on his last leg of his career, going to the Los Angeles team. That is a big question mark. They've now been bounced three years in a row first round. Are they the new Leafs, question mark? No, no one will ever match the Leafs. (laughs) You're mad today. (laughs) Tristan's Tristan's Uh, ready to fight. I had to shut off my air conditioning because it interferes with the mic. So it's about 95 in my room right now. (laughs) With wind chill. So so he's getting the best. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. 
Well, what else do we got? We just got a couple more minutes here. Yeah, we well I'll talk the Red Wings re-sign um Albert Johansson. Yeah, I see that one. Prospect who I think could probably make the lineup next year. I think the Wings are gonna make a lot of moves in the offseason. I think they're gonna ship out a couple of their defensemen. Cough cough Jeff Petrie. Fire him into the sun. He's terrible. Why did we ever sign Justin Hole? That contract needs to be bought out immediately. We can afford to do it. And pay Raymond Sider and Kane. Yes. Didn't buy that Kane jersey just to wear it for one season. Yeah, you, on. you don't want it to be vintage. No, I don't. <laughs> Although that would be kind of cool if it was like a one-year. Oh, you have the rare like Red Wings Kane jersey? A lot of people <laughs> bought it, I'm sure. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, outside of that, was there any other moves? I don't think so. Yeah. What well, a, what I'm a expecting, crazy like, joke. you know, coming up to... Oh, there was a huge trade. What am I saying? Jacob Markstrom. Oh, yeah. We're both... We're both the funniest happy. part is I have it in my notes on, on my phone, Markstrom. <laughs> and forgot how to read. He's like... Yeah. Dude. I was kidding there. Sorry. Didn't Sponsored mean. by Tony's joint. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> opportunity ad placement, 100%. But, um, yeah, so Markstrom goes to the Devils, which have been rumored, I feel, for like the past two years. Mm-hmm. So Calgary's clearly going into a rebuild mode. Yeah. So. Full, like fully, too. Who do you think's the next uh, domino to fall there? Well, Lindholm's leaving. He's not coming back. Yeah. Where Martin do you think he goes? Now. Elias Lindholm. Who do you think he goes to? Mm, I don't know. Uh, you know who I could see actually coming back on him? A team that's trying to get rid of Martin Natchez. A team that has a lot of pending UFAs. There are rumors they're re-signing Slavin. Carolina. Mm-hmm. I they was... drafted him. Mm-hmm. Were you going to say that? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to start. I Honestly, I kind of was thinking Carolina. Yeah. Um, but I'm just, I was just trying center. to think of where else he could fit in, too. Like, um, Well, you got to think about salary cap, too, right? Like, yeah. who can actually afford a $7 million second? Isn't the cap rate? going – well, the cap's going up like $4 million, yeah. too, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So, that's to be considered. But also, who, who could I see? Who needs centermen? Maybe Chicago, pick him up as a second line center under Bedard, because right yeah. now I think it's Dickinson who is not a second line. But center. is he gonna want to necessarily go from a team that's in a rebuild to a team that's in a rebuild? But what winning team can afford you if you're demanding such cash? Well, yeah, but why wouldn't you? Like, I don't get these guys. Like, why don't you take less to have a better shot at winning? Like you already have millions of dollars. Like why wouldn't instead of okay, instead of taking, let's say seven million dollars, okay, give me fucking five and a half, and I'll have a better shot at winning. I think for the right price and his style of play, considering the GM, I could see a team like Nashville mm-hmm. looking at him and saying, "Hey, you know, we're kind of uh, they're kind of retooling. They're not really rebuilding. They got young prospects that are going to jump in and out of the lineup. Uh, they got that." Um, young goalie coming up, Yaroslav Askarov. There's still question marks on whether he's going to be the one to be traded or if it's Saros, right? Do they go young or do they stick to their guns? Um, I could see Saros ending up in Toronto at some point. Oh, my gosh. I don't know why. I just you just made it. every Leafs fan's dream come true. I just feel it, though. But one of those big four are going to have to go. Here's my thing. Bye, Mitchie. That's who I would have been much more happy if Edmonton won this year with Saros in that. Because then they'd have a reason to root. They made a move mm. for the better. Yeah. They didn't. They just kind of stood pat. They got they got Henrik, who has actually been very good for them. Mm. But, yeah, so Markstrom goes to New Jersey in exchange for Ball. Big, thundering defenseman, young. Mm-hmm. Not too much skill, but he can throw the body. He's good defensively. And a 2025 first-round pick. Now, here's the thing. I don't know if that's protected. If it's unprotected, that could sting bad. Because let's look at at face value. Markstrom's an older goalie. He's no spring chicken, right? Yeah. 
maybe this is a telltale sign that his career is falling off. Although he was one of the better goalies in the league this year on a very, very bad team. Yeah, I'm going to look up his age right now while you... Uh... I think he's 34. I could be wrong. But a large to goalie, so prone to injury. But let's say he yeah, does not he's, he's how old? He's six foot six. Oh yeah, he's six he's six. But how old? Thirty four years old. Okay, yeah. So, but let's assume this is a trend. Okay. If he's bad next year, Devils are kind of putting themselves in a bad place because how much is, does he have left on, on a deal, or is he? I think two years. In a way, that's kind of perfect, though. By the end of the deal, he's going to be 36. You're going to right. They're going to have Nico Doss is hopefully ready. So maybe this is only to buy them through to that time. We'll see, or maybe they make a move for a bigger fish in free agency. I know Linus Olmark's name is still being thrown out around the Red Wings too, Mm -hmm. but uh, that first round pick, though, as I was saying just prior could turn into a really good pick if it's unprotected mm-hmm. if the devils don't rebound because that metro is a tough division the whole east is very good but what if it winds up being another lottery pick yeah. right i keep laughing because i keep hearing all the beeping of them working on your yeah street. enjoy uh <laughs> in the noise of construction <laughs> that's why he's so sour right now everybody that's why he's spicy <laughs> yeah i walk home up my road getting covered in dust and sweat Oh, you know what? No complaints. There's guys who work in that and all day. Yeah. Those guys out there, man. Those yep. guys are the real heroes out there. They work hard. Props to them. Yeah. They, and they don't they don't take their time. They yeah. are rushing because they want to get home. Yeah. Because it's kind of like they have like increments they have to have done by a certain day, right? Mm-hmm. So they're like, they, they'll work 13 hours some days. I know. Where they're like, they drive so fast on those things. I'm like, I'm waiting for them to like, run into some idiot car that tries to drive down our road boom imagine getting smoked by one of the big front end loaders nope <laughs> get crushed like a tank yeah but uh yeah so that was pretty much it for the big oh i almost forgot another trade title andrea gets mm-hmm. traded out of dallas this one kind of stings a little bit i like i like the da- 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 i like the landria uh, i love him when he was in <laughs> dallas now he goes to San Jose with Goudreau. So San Jose a little busy, a uh, little busy. Mike Greer making some moves. I'm not too familiar with that guy from Dallas, He's, though. He was gross in junior. I think he could be a good top six option. I think he gets around forty to fifty points somewhere in his career. I think with San Jose, he could have a big opportunity because Dallas is so stacked. Oh yeah, he was never ever going to become a surefire NHLer there. Unfortunately. How old is he? I think he's 23. See, so, see he's now young. for a guy like that, it makes perfect sense. Okay, right. let's go to San Jose. Let's go to a team that maybe doesn't have as much firepower. I'm going to get more of an opportunity, like stuff like that. See, that's a good move. Yeah, and it was an exchange for a fourth. So it's yeah. pennies, right? Yeah. Um, I, I like that. I like that move for both sides. Not so much Dallas. It's a good depth player, but uh, Jim Neal. Best GM in the year, GM of the year, two years in a row. Like, mm-hmm. there's a reason, right? He's the best GM because he has good camaraderie with his players. I'm sure Delandria probably said, like, "Hey, man, I'm tired of playing 15 games a year, being a healthy scratch when I was a first round draft pick." Like, yeah. Hey, but th- that's a problem when you're two way center like that. You don't have the intangibles to crack the lineup. You can't play in the top six because you're not good enough on a team like that. And you can't play in the bottom six because you don't have the same style of play. Mm-hmm. So he goes to a place like San Jose where he can be second, third line player. Special teams, maybe. Maybe, yeah. I think he already played penalty kill in Dallas when he would come in. Like, he's very good um, defensively, but his problem is he um, still cheats on offense when he's playing five on five. Oh, so he gets caught? Sometimes, yeah. That's his only negative uh, downside. But It's not really a good trait to yeah, have, so just Yeah, just <laughs> – <laughs> wrap, wrap it up on my um, takes of the day. Florida needs to figure it out, as Ant <laughs> likes to say. I always I hear Ant when I'm over there, and you got your kids are running you around. You'll you'll look at e, Ethan. You go E, figure it out. Yeah, and That's he does, it. doesn't he? Yep, Paul Maurice. 
you're a good dad. Paul yeah. Maurice needs to look at Sasha Barkov, who's been covering McDavid. I say covering very loosely because letting him score four points is not covering him. Oh. You might as well pass him the puck, which, funny enough, Evan Bouchard did that to Evan Rodriguez <laughs> earlier in the series. That was so funny. He was like, oh, here you go. He sniped it. I'm still laughing at your figure it out thing. Well, it's true. I, I tell that to my mom sometimes now, too. She doesn't like it. but you No, know, it's I'll not. Me her, I'm like, Mom, figure it out. It's not meant. No, she don't me. say that because then if, if she knows that that comes from me, she's going to be whooping my ass next oh, time. She, no, she knows it comes from you, so now she's using that line on me. Oh, shit. It's sorry, this whole, it, you sorry Mom. <laughs> sorry, Mom. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, that's all the points really for me. Just a quick uh, recap of the moves and my mm. thoughts on the cup final. I'm not – I'm not too frazzled about it. I mean, whatever happens, happens. I mean, if Edmonton comes all the way back, they 100% deserve it. Florida yeah. does not deserve it. Um, even if it goes to game seven, I think. Sorry. Flashy. I think if it goes seven, I think Edmonton deserves to win it. Mm-hmm. Just because you put in that much work, all of that to lose would be really sad. But, yeah, for sure. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I like. I want Florida to win it because they're built the right way. Like they're a dominant force, and Bill Zito did a great job mm-hmm. the other night. He, I'm sure he had a few choice words at oh, the end I'm of sure, that game. Yeah. He fired sure. his water bottle into the next for stratosphere, sure. but so I'm thinking too for us. Like the next show, I'm thinking will probably be after I'm the cup. It'll be after the cup is won, shall we say? And then we'll do a little wrap up for everybody. I do. I do want to ask you. Sorry, I don't mean oh, to interrupt. Go ahead, bro. Up, one more discussion point. Do you think McDavid deserves the con Smythe, uh, even if it's a loss? Oh, shit. I do. I do too. But if like it's a historical what, run, as Brett was saying, so yeah, Brett asked me the same thing too, and I like I now think yeah like but i said to him too if it's florida it's got to be barkov too like he's got to be one of them isn't he up like there and it's something in this series but... sometimes it's not all about what you do on the stat sheet it's what you do to get the i think job. it should go to it's so hard at this point because no one on florida stands out that just speaks to their depth i'd honestly give it to I would say Bobrovsky because he kind of carried them through that conference final. Mm-hmm. But he's lacked luster in this finals round. Maybe Matthew Kachuk. He has been good. He got three he's points last good. game. So Yeah, I mean, and that, that diving save, mm-hmm. if he could pull off some kind of heroic similar to that in game six or seven here, despite all of what people say about him, he's a very good hockey player. And he knows his role, mm-hmm. and he does it very well and very effectively. So, for sure. Well, and yeah. So everybody, all right. Uh, you know what? We will talk after the Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah, we'll do a smother. We'll do a little wrap up. So everybody, enjoy the finals. We'll we'll see you later. Yep. Peace out. I've lost my five with time. My